the chime lets us know that we are recording. So welcome everyone to Harmony Springs virtual gathering this Sunday morning, August 30th, the last Sunday in August. It feels in Ohio like we're fluctuating back and forth uh, this time of year between summer and potentially fall. It's hard to tell depending on the day. So uh, I hope you all are enjoying a little bit nicer day today. Uh, you'll probably notice that our my background is different. Our family decided to uh, take a spontaneous trip this weekend. Our kids just started school last week, and I think uh, actually going to school uh, even a few days a week was overwhelming for them since they haven't done it in six months or something. So uh, we decided to drive over to Pittsburgh, and we're staying in a hotel and uh, going to try out Kennywood Park, which we've never been to with our children this afternoon. So there is our update from the England family. Trying to do our best to find some things we can do that are outdoors and uh, trying to avoid the virus as much as possible, but uh, we'll see, see how that goes over wearing masks around an amusement park all day. All right, a uh, few things to let you know about as we get started this morning. Thanks for being here, first of all. Uh, check the chat thread in the upper right-hand corner and uh, visit harmonysprings.org slash virtual-gathering and you can follow along our uh, order of service and a second page that has a number of announcements you can read to keep you updated on things going on in the life of Harmony Springs. An exciting time to be a part of Harmony Springs. Uh, one quick building update. We're in the middle, middle of a building project in the middle of this pandemic. And the last update that uh, we have for you is that we have a, although it's rough, gravel driveway put in that uh, I heard that uh, Debbie and John McDonald drove their Prius back through it. So if the Prius can go back there, I think you all are good uh, to be able to make it back there. So if you want to drive back, it is pretty neat to just be able to drive on our property, uh, which is progress. So. Uh, take a trip down there if you haven't been by lately to take a look at what's going on. Still doing uh, the site work and excavation work currently, so we're making progress and uh, digging some retention basins. Uh, we had a discussion at our staff meeting this last week that we all thought there was one retention, big retention basin on our property, and then when we drove out there, realized that it looks like there are two, and in actuality, there are two. I think one is larger than the other, but uh, we do have sort of two different retention basins uh, being put on our property. Uh, I guess it was, if you knew how to read all the drawings and everything, uh, you probably knew that, but uh, I'm a pastor and not a civil engineer, so... I didn't know that until someone told me. So there you go. Uh, a few other things. Uh, we will celebrate communion as we do each week, even virtually together. And last week we asked if you would send in pictures to Jennifer Burl Young of the communion you use, and she received a number of them. If you didn't get a chance to do that and still can or would like to take a picture of whatever communion you use in your home and send it over to Jennifer, uh, we'll have her post that information, uh, maybe a cell phone number to text it or an email to email it over to her. You're welcome to do that during the service this morning. And if you're just listening and not reading that, uh, it's jennifer at harmonysprings.org. You can take a picture and send that over. All right. Let's see here. What else? Uh, one second, sorry. Here we go. First off uh, up this morning is Pastor Kim. Good morning, Pastor Kim. She has a reading from Leviticus for us, and then we'll start our yeah, <clears throat> Pastor Kim. Yeah, good morning, everybody. We continue uh, our service by reading uh, Leviticus 25, 
verses 8 through 23 and 35 through 43. Once every 49 years, on the 10th day of the seventh month, which is also the great day of forgiveness, trumpets are to be blown everywhere in the land. This 50th year is sacred. It is a time of freedom and of celebration when everyone will receive back their original property and slaves will return home to their families. This is a year of complete celebration, so don't plant any seed or harvest what your fields or vineyards produce. In this time of sacred celebration, you may eat only what grows on it. During this year, all property must go back to the original owner. So when you buy or sell farmland, the price is to be determined by number of crops it can produce before the next year of celebration. Don't try to cheat. If it is a long time before the next year of celebration, price will be higher because what is really being sold are the crops that the land can produce. I am the Lord your God, so obey me and don't cheat anyone. If you obey my laws and teachings, you will live safely in the land and enjoy its abundant crops. Don't ever worry about what you will eat during the seventh year when you are forbidden to plant or harvest. I will see to it that your harvest is enough for the sixth year to last for three years. In the eighth year, you will live on what you harvested in the sixth year. But in the ninth year, you will eat what you plant and harvest in the eighth year. No land may be permanently bought or sold. It all belongs to me. It isn't your land, and you only live there for a little while. If any of your people become poor and unable to support themselves, You must help them, just as you are supposed to help foreigners who live among you. Don't take advantage of them by charging any kind of interest or selling them food or profit for profit. Instead, honor me by letting them stay where they now live. Remember, I am the Lord your God. I rescued you from Egypt and gave you the land of Canaan so that I would be your God. Suppose some of your people become so poor but they have to sell themselves and become your slaves. Then you must treat them as servants rather than slaves. And in the year of celebration, they are to be set free. And so they and their children may return home to their families and property. I brought them out of Egypt to be my servants, not to be sold as slaves. So obey me and don't be cruel to the poor. The word of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue our worship, let us pray together. In the ministry of Jesus, you gave us means to envision life in your kingdom. Grant us courage to live new lives of faith, trusting in your grace, which is sufficient to meet all of our needs. Lord of life, by your grace, you have called us to be your children. And we are your servants, Lord, serving you. And in your love, you have showered us with the blessings of life, family to nurture us, friends to encourage us, work to challenge us, rest to restore us. We are thankful, Lord. We are thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who by his life and death and resurrection created a new community of disciples, us. We count it privilege, Lord, to share the community of faith. Lord, give us vision of life of your kingdom. Give us the grace to seek to live according to your will and not ours. Not counting the cost, but looking to the day when your kingdom will reign supreme. Give us the courage to live as community of faithful followers. Shower us with mercy so that we might extend mercy to others. Remind us, Lord, to be peacemakers because you are called the Prince of Peace. Let others see the gospel of Christ lived out through us and keep us in love with you, Lord, that we might give love to all people. We ask, Lord, help for those who are devastated by the hurricane this past week in Louisiana and Texas. We pray, Lord, peace in the midst of unrest and political upheaval in our country. We pray for people here and around the world We ask your help and healing for those hospitalized, for those hurting, 
for those who are lonely and sick, for those, Lord, that are estranged from their own loved ones, or even apart, or bring healing and mercy. We pray healing for the body of Jacob, Jacob Blake, Lord. Help him in the hospital also to recover. We ask for Aunt Rose, Lord. Be merciful to her and to all those, Lord, in need this day. We ask, Lord, forgiveness for our racism. We pray for all frontline workers, for first responders, for all of us in the midst of this pandemic, Lord. Protect the students as they continue to return back to the school. Be with them a present help, Lord. Bring us a cure to the coronavirus and bring the world healing, healing in the great name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Community of Christ, who make the cross your own, live out your creed and risk your life for God alone. The God who wears your face, to whom all worlds belong, whose children are Grace and every song, community of Christ, look past the church's door and see the refugee, the hungry and the poor. Take hands with the oppressed, the job in your street take towel and water that you wash your neighbor's feet community of Christ through whom the word must sound cry out for justice and for peace the whole world round Disarm the powers that war and all that can destroy. Turn bombs to bread and tears of anguish into joy. When menace melts away, so shall God's will be done. The climate of the world be peace and Christ its son. Our currency be love and kindliness our law. Our food and faith be shared as one for it. Terry wanted to let you know that the background noise you heard there in the second verse was uh, not static. It was the cicadas joining in, singing with him uh, outside. Pastor Kim, will you continue our worship with a second scripture reading? Yes, as we prepare for Pastor Joel's message and thank the Lord for the cicada choirs behind Terry, 
We thank the Lord also for the gospel of Jesus Christ from Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 21. He came to Nazareth, where he had been reared, as he always did on the Sabbath. He went to the meeting place. When he stood up to read, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, God's Spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burden and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the place was on him, intent, and he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. During this summer here, we have been preaching, or I've been preaching, and we've been working through a sermon series called The Very Good Gospel based on a book by the same title from Lisa Sharon Harper. And as summer is drawing to an end, this sermon series is also drawing to an end. So as I said before, coronavirus, if you weren't a fan of one particular sermon series, just stick around. It will change to something else uh, after a while. So uh, one more week of the very good gospel. And then uh, we have some special things planned for the Sunday after Labor Day and the following Sunday after that, the 13th and the 20th. We're going to be uh, debuting a virtual choir project that our choir and musicians have been working on. We are going to uh, promote and put out there into the world our podcast, Harmony Springs Gives Voice, that you'll be able to listen to and share. Uh, so a number of exciting things we've been working on over the summer during the pandemic here. Uh, most all virtual so that everyone can be as safe as possible and we can uh, work together and meet together using uh, technology that we've come to at least put up, up with, if not uh, find somewhat convenient, I guess, at best. Uh, let's review for a few weeks, uh, for a few minutes here, the last few weeks, the big overarching theme that we started this sermon series about the very good gospel was simply this, from the very beginning in Genesis, the Hebrew word that words that are written that describe how God felt about creation, that those high priests in the ancient Hebrew days penned were tov miod, very good, vehemently good, aggressively good. All of those adjectives could fit. Not just good, but really, 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 really good. It was really, really good for God because creation was perfect. In the description of God's creation, everything was interconnected. Humankind cared for each other and for the creation that God had made on their behalf. Humankind accepted God's instruction and responsibility to be stewards of the world of each other. And in so doing, we as human, human beings could embody and embrace the perfect mission that God created from the beginning. But then we know as we read further into Genesis that that didn't last for very long. There was a serpent that entered the scene and two trees and a fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Adam and Eve, those two first humans described in Genesis, partake of that fruit, even though they knew they weren't supposed to. And in so doing, that word that uh, we cringe at, that we don't like to acknowledge, but is nevertheless there, sin enters the world and our lives. The perfection, the perfect interconnectedness, the care for each other that God created, that Tov Miod got broken. And from there, a snowball effect through the next few chapters of Genesis happened as Cain and Abel, the first two brothers in the scriptures, start not getting along. I don't know of many brothers that have always, always gotten along all the time. 
but in their disagreement, death enters the picture and the ultimate end of sin and following sin enters the picture and is made known, death. God, who entrusted humankind to be caretakers of the world, then gives some instruction to Adam and Eve and the snowball effect of the separation between God and humankind continues to roll on. In Genesis chapter 14, the first mention of the word king is uttered. Only 14 chapters later, after God's perfect creation and the beginning of separation and sin entering the picture, the word king enters the picture. And ironically, immediately after the word king is the word war. Both are together as if they're difficult to separate. In Lisa Sharon Harper's words, she writes this, it only took 14 chapters for the state of God's creation to shift from Tov Miod to war and empire. Looking back on history, if you're a history buff or if uh, you paid attention to class in high school and, co and or college, you know that our human history, although it has and had the ability to embody Tov Miod, is full of empire building and associated with it war. The invention of kings and nations, those boundary lines we put around the places that we live and our dedication to nation and nationalism, when we follow that to its end, can be a very sinful way of being and living in the world. When we put nation above each other and God, things seem to unwind, unravel, and end up like those two words in Genesis 14, a world of kingdoms and war. God, I think, knew that. And in the first reading in from Leviticus that we read today, God institutes a system of living for the ancient Hebrews, uh, a way of making known that everyone is cared for in God's economy and kingdom. The year of Jubilee, of whom we named our daughter after Jubilee, that name that gets squints and looks every once in a while when we say what her name is at the doctor's office, the year of Jubilee in Leviticus is described as a 50 year celebration that puts everything right again, that has been going wrong for 50 years. We know in this country what difference 50 years can make, sometimes not make, but 50 years, a lot can happen. And in the verses we read in Leviticus, we understand and know that for the ancients, even if things had been going wrong for yourself as a person, for your family for 50 years, the year of Jubilee was always within one's lifetime of happening. God never abandons his creation. God doesn't give up on the hope that Tov Miod can always be restored even for the ancients, every 50 years, we read that long litany of things that were supposed to happen that the ancient Hebrews did every 50 years. People who were slaves reverted back to citizens, people whose land had been taken because of choices they made or didn't make, things that happened to them. Every 50 years, things got put right again. Land got returned to its original owners, and a number of things that could happen over 50 years that caused some people to have more and other people to have less, that caused some people to be poor and other people to be rich because of taking what those poor folks had. Every 50 years, God would work to make things right. 
in an interview I was watching with William Barber, that Disciples of Christ in our tradition minister who is leading the new Poor People's Campaign, a movement we've been involved with on the virtual march on Washington in April. In an interview I was watching with William Barber, he points this out, that in the scripture we read today, Jesus's first sermon, his first reading of scripture in the synagogue as a rabbi, Jesus is handed a scroll and he picks a passage from Isaiah 61, which direct, directly references the year of Jubilee. Lisa Sharon Harper in this book, The Very Good Gospel, points out that interconnectedness between the year of Jubilee, the references in Isaiah to the year of Jubilee, and Jesus's mission in the world as he stands before his friends and family in the synagogue, in the place in which he grew up. She writes this, born in a feeding trough, honored by shepherds and international dignitaries, hunted by Herod, asylum seeker in Egypt, tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and nights, Jesus stood before the people in a synagogue. They handed him the scroll and he turned to Isaiah 61 and read these words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then Jesus said to the people, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, Lisa writes, I just brought good news to the poor. I just proclaimed release to the captives. I just proclaimed recovery of sight to the blind. I just demanded freedom for the oppressed. The verse Jesus turned to is a direct reference to the year of Jubilee. In other words, people, though you may never have enacted the kind of dominion I prescribed from the time I established my nation, I am establishing it right here, right now. Lisa Sharon Harper in these poetic words points out that Jesus in his very first sermon announced that he was the embodiment of God's spirit of Tov Miod, God's spirit that wants all things to be made right again. And for all of those people in the world then and now that face a brokenness, face the consequences of humankind's sin, which entered the world so long ago, for all of that long litany of things that can go wrong in the world, Jesus announces in Luke here that he is the embodiment of the restoring of all things the way they should be. The spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me, he says. He sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn, to give them a garland of ashes. All of those words referenced in Isaiah, Jesus was the embodiment of. And Lisa Sharon Harper points out this truth, which I think is important for us to consider as we are considering how God wants us as human beings, as people who walk in the way of Jesus, who are dedicated to that, who people who are people who call ourselves Christians, who go to church. Lisa McCarran Harper points this out, this simple truth. Through Jesus, we are blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. It makes me wonder what would and does my life look like if I believe that truth, that I am blessed through Jesus, through God's spirit to be a blessing in the world. What difference does that make? When I have an opportunity to be a blessing, Jesus says, if you're following me, I'm the embodiment of blessing do it. 
If you have an opportunity to make things right for the poor, do it. If you have a right, if you have an ability to heal someone who is blind or sick, do it. If you have the ability to lift oppression off of someone's shoulders who are in prison or facing hunger or hardship, do it, Jesus says. And when you do, you walk in my path, in my way of being, for I am the embodiment of that truth in the world. We are blessed, we are great to be a blessing to each other. When we enact that, when we do that, we bring about Tov Miod in the world and reclaim it again on God's behalf. We here at Harmony Springs, I think, have one big thing we're building that embodies that truth, our building. From the very beginning, as we began rethinking what our building would look like in our society, in this age, modern age of which we live, we decided early on that our building would be a gift to those around us, a gift to the community. We don't plan to be meeting in a church building that's beautiful and nice and pristine and keep it to ourselves. We plan to build it and share it as much and as often as we possibly can. And if there are people in our community and society who are about that work of feeding the hungry, of embodying relief to prisoners and the poor, then all the more. If they need a place to meet, a people who will support them, Harmony Springs should be it and is it. I can't wait, my friends, to see how much we can do when we build this great asset we've been working so hard to erect. Harmony Springs building will be a place that in its physical manifestation will cultivate hope and love freedom to those who need it, food for the hungry, that long list of things that Jesus said he embodied, we as Christians in our modern world, as a community of faith situated in a particular community in green, for the people there, we are the embodiment and can be the embodiment of Tov Miod. It's a high calling for us at Harmony Springs to consider how we can go about doing that, but I am excited to be a pastor of a church that is committed to doing just that. What does it look like for you and your family and your involvement in our church to be a blessing, to be blessed, and then to be a blessing? We are people who have received God's good gift of Christ in our lives and we plan to share it as often as we can, wherever we can, with whomever we can. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen and amen. As we move into our communion time, go ahead and grab your supplies that you have, and uh, we will go straight into it. We will remember that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now we have a word of prayer from John McDonald. Would you join me in prayer, please? <clears throat> Our magnificent, creative, and merciful God, your love for all your creation has patiently sought to guide your human family in ways of peace. You sent generations of prophets to proclaim the way you wanted us to live. 
peacefully with one another. But your human children still rebelled until you sent your only begotten son to proclaim your good news and establish a new covenant with us. Still, the evil in the hands of powerful people conspired to capture, charge him with false claims, torture, and then slay him on a cruel device of death as he purposefully carried the burden of all human sins on himself. We stand here today free because his love for humanity would not leave us unprotected from your wrath. We have come to this time of remembrance to rededicate ourselves to the cause for which he gave his broken body and to celebrate the new covenant sealed in his precious blood that flowed from that cross. We can approach your holy throne through faith in his courageous sacrifice and trusting you in all things. May it be so for us, each one of us, we pray in the name of our crucified and risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the table of the Lord is ready. There's room for all and there is enough for all. I invite you to take your elements, eat and drink together as a church.
As we go to our post-communion prayer, I want to share this meditation by Pastor Katie Stenta as we hit fall and things are changing. Um, it's called In This Smush of Time. Lord God Almighty, please help me as time continues to smush. Summer is ending, and yet it's also the thousandth day of March. I'll wake up on Monday, know that it's Monday. I did do church yesterday, though now it's different. I'll do my chores, maybe find 15 minutes to exercise, and then set my kids up for their activities and cross my fingers they will last them a while. Then I'll sit down at my computer to work and cram in as much productivity as I can. Then I'll sigh, realize I've forgotten to turn in an article or are late for my kids' counseling or have missed someone's Zoom meeting or training because my heart and soul didn't know it was Monday. My mind knew, but my soul is in denial because Monday is not that important in the grand scheme of things. And I remain in crisis mode. My alarm's going off for the pandemic and the injustices of the world and not for the mundane mundanities of life. My ADHD family and friends say this is how time works for them on most days. It's non-linear, non-subjective, more like a wobbly, wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. I'm stuck in the ball of time stuff. Appointments are hazy at best and I can't remember things from before the pandemic. Lord, help me to hold on to things I need to and to let go of the things I don't need. And clocks are tricksy. And, at the, at, and the end of the day drags on and on so long that it's hard to get anything done. Why is that? Help me to stop doom scrolling. Remind me to take a walk, to sit in the sun, to pause, to do something fun. Help me to remember it's Monday as best I can and to practice self-grace when I can't and when others can't as well. Help me to set the alarms I need and help me to worry less about time and be in the moment when I can, I pray. Thank you, Jesus, for once again coming to us through the simple meal of bread and juice, for nourishing our bodies and souls, and filling us with hope as we look forward to the eternal banquet. Amen. Amen. All right. I want to encourage you to uh, check out the second page on the website, harmonysprings.org slash virtual dash gathering for announcements and things going on this coming week. We have a few meetings scheduled this week. Uh, Tuesday, we have a children's ministry planning meeting at 10 a.m. Our trustees are also meeting on Tuesday in the evening at uh, 6.15. Staff meeting, book study, all also happening this week. If you haven't already, take a look, uh, visit our YouTube channel for uh, previous services and time-lapse videos uh, that have been captured so far of construction. On our website, uh, the link is also there, but you can look through all the pictures of our groundbreaking ceremony. Take a minute and do all that. And I encourage you to at least drive by, if not drive into our property to really see what's happening uh, on our property. It's difficult for us uh, to envision it until we actually see it, but it's pretty amazing. So uh, I encourage you to do that. All right, Every, uh, everything else, uh, prayer concerns and announcements, we'll go out in an email on uh, tomorrow that we typically send out. Thanks to Donna, and thanks for being here, joining us virtually this morning. September is around the corner, and fall and pumpkin everything is also around the corner. I hope uh, you enjoy this season in between. One nice day before uh, time flies much faster than we like to admit. Say a prayer for me as I spend a day at Kennywood with our children. Not sure what that's going to be like, but uh, we will see. Thanks, everybody, for being here this morning. And may God be with you in spirit as we 
leave this virtual place together and do our best to follow Jesus and embody being a blessing to those around us as God has called us to do so. Thanks for being Harmony Springs, for being a church with a big heart for each other and its community. May God bless us as we leave this place and shine God's face upon us. May you feel God's spirit guiding and directing you in the week to come. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Take that off. Yep. Bye. Bye. Have a good mm -hmm. week. Yeah, take care. Okay.